I'm going to show you how to make a setup on a West Coast balancing machine without the pre recorded data. In this example, we are going to make a setup on a T4 compressor assembly. This will be for the assembly, the compressor and the turbine shaft put together. It is very important that the turbine shaft be balanced by itself because it has two correction planes. Then the compressor wheel must be balanced preferably by itself because it has two correction planes. And then the assembly can be balanced to basically compensate for the slinger or thrust spacers which I'm putting on right now. And just basically the mating from the board to the turbine shaft and the nut can all cause some imbalance in your wheel. So what we're going to do is we have already balanced the turbine shaft and we've already balanced the compressor assembly. Now we're going to do an assembly balance. We'll go ahead and tighten it, not torque it, but tighten it so it does not move. Now we'll install the part into the balancing machine. The belt on there like this. The assembly sits in the machine like this, adjusted if you were balancing other parts accordingly. Adjust your belt. Make the slight adjustments you need on your thrust wire. Just like that. Now in order to make your own setups, you'll need three things. You'll need a calculator, a caliper, and a scale. We have broken this making your setups into five easy steps. First there's your presettings. This is the initial settings that we'll dial into the machine. In the owner's manual it says the for the um, initial settings for an assembly would be the same as the compressor wheel. The calibration settings on both the left and the right side should be 800. And the plane dial should be set on 200. Switch settings should be set for I, A, B. Leave this in minus. This is the X1 for the meter scaling. Minus B, A, I. Now the filter should be set depending on if it's a small or a large part. For this part, it should be set for about 500. It's kind of a medium sized part. If it was small HI, Mitsubishi, something, I might run it as, as high as 700. The motor dial for the first part should be set full counterclockwise. The next step is to adjust the motor speed. In order to do this, we need to place a piece of wax on the part so it'll throw it out of balance a good amount. Use a piece of wax. Place this on the left correction plane. On a turbine assembly, the left correction plane is right here on the back face of the compressor wheel. The right correction plane is right here on the back face of the turbine wheel. Okay, so you have your left and right correction planes. 
I'm placing my piece of wax on the left side. Go ahead and point the strobe light towards it. The motor switch on. I want to start to increase the motor speed. At the same time, you're going to press down on the left correction and note the meter reading. Start to increase the motor. You'll see the meter needle will start to increase. The faster you go, the more it will increase. If it peaks out or pegs out the meter, you want to actually go down to the left or the, I'm sorry, the left bottom scale. Continue increasing the motor speed. Now you'll get to a point, if you go too far, the motor or the meter will actually fall back down. It'll come back down. Let's see, right here, it's coming back down. Now I want to decrease the motor speed to bring the meter needle back up to the highest point. Now once you get to the highest point, your motor speed is set correctly and you can turn the motor switch off. And do not touch the motor speed dial again. Now the next step would be remove the piece of weight we had on there. Now we need to check to see if there is any kind of unbalance in this part. If there is, we will get a steady location with the strobe light. In other words, the part will appear to be frozen with our markings that we make. Um, and we will also get some kind of meter reading on the meter. Now we need a balanced part to be able to continue making this setup. So if there is any kind of meter reading or location, we will use this weight to make temporary corrections to actually pre-balance the part. Now let's, that's why it's best to have a balanced part to do this procedure. But let's see what we have here. So what we will do now, let's turn the motor on. Check the left top button and see if, what kind of meter reading. We do have an initial imbalance in this part, about six on the left side. Now on the right side, check that, it is very low. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is check the balance on the left side and see if we can balance the part any closer. So while I'm holding it down, it's reading six. Point the strobe light towards the back face where I have made some markings. I can see my X mark. Turn it right back to where the X mark was. Now it's telling me it's heavy right here. That's where I should remove material. Well, I want to make some temporary corrections so I can do one of two things. I can either add the weight down here Or I can actually physically change these two switches. This is the left and this is the right side. What those do is instead of your heavy spot being at 12 o'clock, now the light spot or the point where you want to add your weight will be at 12 o'clock. So that weight I just added now it's going to show up here to be out of balance. So it makes it easier for me. So now I'm going to flick the motor switch on. What I want to do is check my left side, see how I did. Okay, it's saying it's out seven. Well, what does that mean? Let's go ahead back to the part and see where that weight is that I added. Okay, so while I'm checking the left side, I'm 
Okay, I can see I added too much weight, so I'm gonna stop the part. I just added too much weight to that. These machines are very, very sensitive. Okay, turn it back on, check it again. I'm out about two. Okay, it came down, I'm better. Check my right side. And I'm about one. Okay, well, let's check the left side once more time. Since I'm getting a little bit of unbalanced reading, perhaps I can make a correction to bring it down a tad lower. Okay, my weight moved a little bit, so I'll stop the part. Put it back to where it was. I'm just going to add a, an additional weight. I'm going to leave that one alone I have on there. Add this additional weight to my new 12 o'clock position here. Turn it on. Check my left side. Oh, I can see no reading with the strobe light. Let me check my meter. Wow, oh, it's very, very, very low. Okay, this is good. Okay, so my left and my right sides are pretty closely balanced. So now I'm able to continue making my setup. So now I'll stop the motor. The next step is plane separation. This is where I tell the machine that where the left correction plane is and where the right correction plane is. These are the places we're going to remove material when we balance the part. In this step, I'm going to use another piece of this wax that's about the same size we used to set the speed and I'm going to place it in the left correction plane anywhere on here, it does not matter where on the left correction plane leave the other weights I placed on there to balance the part with alone for now place this piece of weight right here because this is the left correction plane so I'm squeezing it so it's really flat and it's straight in that left correction plane now when I spin this up the right correction plane should still be balanced. If it is not, that means this piece of wax is interfering onto this side. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn it on. And I'm going to show you, if you press the left side, see it went way out of balance, of course, that's where we place the weight. Now, I'm going to check the right side. As you can see, it went out of balance to about three. Now, while I'm holding down the right side, I'm going to adjust the right plane separation dial in either direction for the lowest reading I can get. As you can see, it went worse when I went that direction. Let's go back the other direction. See if I can get it all the way down to balance. See, and then it comes back up again. So that was my lowest point I can get it that's where you want it. Now the right side is ignoring the left side wax. Now at this point we stop the part and we do the same thing. We're going to actually remove that piece of weight from the left side and we're going to place it on the right correction plane. Okay. Now when we spin it up this time, we will see that the right side, of course, is out of balance. But we want to check the left side. And it is balanced. Now, that's because my settings were already fairly close. Now, if they weren't, I want to show you what would happen. If this was in the wrong position, that means now the right side wax is interfering with the left side plane. Now, any combination of this plane dial and these three switches on this side will ignore that piece of weight. So, if I go every direction I can with this plane dial, and these switches in this position and the left side still sees the right side, I would have to start changing my switch settings also. So for example, watching the meter, if I change this I.O., you can see it got much worse. So we would know, okay, 
in the O position, if I go all the way down with this plane dial and all the way to 999 with this plane dial, it's not going to come back to be in balance. Therefore, it is still seeing the right weight on the right side. So I would say that is wrong. Then I would try this switch in this position. Same thing. It's wrong because no matter what I do, it's still way out on that side. I would continue doing the same thing until I get the right plane correction. So that's the settings you want for the left side. Now the plane separation is finished. Now the very last step is the calibration of the workpiece. For this you will need to know the calibration or the balancing tolerance for the part. Okay, in this case we know that the balancing tolerance for a T4 assembly is 0 .0, 0 0.027 gram inches. If you're not sure you can actually look in the back of the owner's manual and compare it to a weight of a part that you do have a balancing tolerance for. Okay. Now the reason you need a gram scale is for this procedure you actually need to weigh up a piece of weight that is approximately 10 times heavier than the balancing tolerance. In this case, if the balancing tolerance is 0 0.027, not 020, I'm sorry, it's 0 0.020. The balancing tolerance for this part is, that's what we were looking up, is 0 0.020 gram inches. So in this case you want to weigh up a piece of wax that is at least 0.2 grams or larger. Okay, so turn on my scale here. Just see what this piece of wax weighs here. 0.3, this will work. So 0.3 grams. Now the whole reason we're doing this is we want to set up 0 .020 gram inch, which is the tolerance for this part, to equal one on the meter. So this will be the target. We'll try to balance down to one to achieve this tolerance. Okay, so we're using 0 .3 grams as our known weight. Okay, now we're going to place this on the left correction plane of the part. Okay, so I'm going to place it right here staying away from those other temporary correction weights we have. Now you need a caliper because the reason being is we need to measure out the distance from the center of the shaft here or the center line of the part to the wax. Okay, so one point three inches okay so with our calculator we're going to take the known weight which is the weight we weighed up point three multiplied by one point three which is the radius we placed it at equals point three nine and we divide that number by our balancing tolerance which is point zero two zero that equals 19 and a half. What that number is, is 19 and a half on the meter. So what this told us was this weight at that radius is exactly 19 and a half times heavier than 0 .020. So if we set up the meter to equal 19 and a half with that weight at that radius, that means one will equal 0 .020 gram inch. Okay, so now with the weight is on the part, I'm going to do, turn on the motor switch, press down the left hand button, take a look at the meter, okay, adjust the left hand calibration dial until your meter equals 19 and a half, so right about there. Okay, stop the part. 
Now we're going to take the weight off of the left side. We're going to use the same, same .3 piece of wax that we used and we're going to put it onto the right side. Correction plane. We're going to measure out the distance. Point eight six nine. So in this step we're going to use 0.3 grams times 0.869 divided by 0 0.020 gram inch. So it's 0.3 times 0.869 equals, divide that number by 0 0.020 equals 13. So it's telling me is that weight at that radius on the right side. should be 13 times heavier than 0 .020 gram inches. So what we're going to do is with that weight there, we're going to press the right side, pick the right side. We want to be 13 and we're at about 20. So we will move the right calibration dial until we read 13. Stop the part. Okay, now we need to take the calibration weight off this side. Now with the calibration weight off, the only weights that are left on there are our temporary correction weight. We're going to turn it on and see if we have a balanced part. One or less for this part would be balanced. Okay. It is. Now, the temporary corrections we did, let's take those off and see if we're still within, because as you can tell, we're well within the balancing tolerance of 0 0.020. Now I took the temporary corrections off. The part is out of balance, two and a half times tolerance on the compressor side. On the right side, it is within a half on the meter, which means it's perfectly balanced. But on the left side, it is out two and a half on the meter. So what we do is while we're holding that down, on the left side, I will position the strobe light so I can see my markings on the wheel. Now that I see my markings are steady, as if the part's not spinning, I turn off the part, put it back to where it was, it was about right here, and what I want to do is actually take my marking pen and make a mark right at the 12 o'clock position on my compressor wheel. Now what I'll do is I will take the part off of the machine, and I'll take it over to my grinder and I will remove some material from that 12 o'clock position. Then I'll actually come back to the machine and see how I did. So if I were had to, to have gone over there, taken away a little material, um, came back to the part, put, put the part back on the machine, I would spin it up again and again take my left reading to see if I did any good. You know, and as you can see, yeah, I'm almost there. I'm down to about one. I removed some material, not quite, probably not quite enough. So I'll actually look at the part under the strobe light one more time, seeing if my mark actually moved, stay in the same place, what happened to it. Um, I would go ahead and shut the machine off, take the part, go back, come back over, and you know, added, added our, um, you know, put, put it back on the machine again and turn it on.
and see if I'm less than one. In this case I am. So now I would check again the right side. I'm still less than one. This part is good. These are the settings I would use for the T4 assembly.